Hello everyone, welcome to dev stream number 46 uh, of Legend of Alchemist. So today we're going to be working on a little bit more of the AI. Last time we got the move tactic shift type of uh, thing working where when uh, the bot, well, when the enemy took enough damage, he would shift to a different move tactic and stop attacking and carry out that tactic. We got that to work on. Well, I mean, sorry, <laughs> we got that to, to expand on. So we're just going to have the, the, what's on the sticky note today, which is the strafe, distance, and block mechanics for those move tactics. So we'll be adding those in. Then we'll be trying to improve the freeze status effect, test out some more of the conditions uh, for the movement changes, and then finalize uh, the chieftain boss fight if we can. Finalize, right? Like finalize. So for being late today, we ordered some food, and it, um, it, took, a, well, it took a while for us to figure out what we wanted. So I ordered that food, and it got here a little bit later so i'm a bit late today so my apologies so without further ado let's get into this we'll uh run this so i'll see what we have so far just mute the audio and uh the sound design needs to be worked on i have sounds and music bot and i also used some ai to make there's a few of the themes not all of them most of the music is bought uh from the unity asset store just like the art assets um, but they're not like set up right now, so I just have it muted. There's a few like attack swings and stuff, it's just it's not very like well done. So we have to fix this guy's attack stuff, his range rather, but you can see here like if we hit him, uh, and he gets below that 75% threshold. Okay, well that's strange. I think we've, uh, we fixed this last time. There we are. You're supposed to just run away right away. Uh, this isn't going to be the final boss uh, mechanics that he has. You see he stops attacking and he runs off. Uh, it's supposed to happen every time. I guess there's something we have to iron out. But that's that's the boss. Might turn down that uh, that tracer effect or that trail effect. I'm not sure. But you see, like, it's just like he heals, he comes over here, he starts attacking. We attack him. Oh, I think it's because he's in the middle of a combo when he shifts. No, I guess not. Anyways. It's based off of, like, this, um... We'll open that up. There's this react timer. It's based off that, so maybe it's just not getting set properly. Got my pro programming juice here. Cheers. So, what we want to do today is um, we want to add strafe uh, mechanics and implement animation shift. So, we want to shift his animations to the strafe animations and Add those mechanics in. Um, we want to also add um, check to make sure we have lock on animations. Because not everyone has lock on animations, and I want to make sure we don't have it. We don't try to use them. I don't know if they'll look okay. Like for example. Some of the enemies are going to be like mindless, not mindless, mindless, but you know, like there's some enemies that like the, the jungle goblins have a strafe animation and they're also intelligent. So they'll actually like hunt you in a way like they'll, or du duel you. Whereas those giant jungle bugs that we have, they're just going to like attack you. They don't care. They're like the, uh, uh, those enemies, the, um, I'm new to Warhammer 40k. I just started playing with space Marines too. The uh, terminate, the term, ter the, the 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 they're like the they're like the Zerg from uh Starforge Star no Starfield. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> Anyways, I can't. What is that game called? Starcraft. Starcraft. Holy she is. Anyways, uh, so we'll do that. We'll add distance, which is a strafe um, effect. 
of uh, moving backwards while backwards while targeting. Actually, rather strafe effect, or it's just going to be a turn around and run away. A uh, way to get distance. So the run away is kind of like what we have. So there's a, a distance skill I want where it's like a strafe where they just like back up. And I want this to be on the Chieftain because he has a spear. Um, and outranges us. Um, so if so the idea I'm thinking is if we block while we're facing him, he'll want to move back to uh take advantage of his reach. So I want it so that when the character blocks, it's going to set off a move tactic so that Kuma Kuma is going to start to walk backwards while facing the player. So then when the player drops their block, he'll just stab them with the spear. Because we have that in the uh, that combat tactics that uh, whenever he is in range of two, which is another way of saying that, hey, when you're outside the reach of the player, or when the player goes outside of your claw attack reach, I want you to stab him with your spear. So the spear attack condition, minimum distance. It says five, but I think we changed that to like something else. So that's how that works. Then we want to add a block. So um, we want uh, a skill or move tactic. Uh, I think it's going to be a skill or some other thing. We want a block state. And the block state is done in character manager and or character handler. And that gets, um, whenever we take damage, the character handler has a function called take damage. And it checks if there's, if you're blocking, there's like a 60 degree angle. So 30 degrees on each side. And if you are getting hit within that angle, you do not take damage. So you can still take damage from behind or from the side, just not from these front areas. Um, I'm just going to make a note. Uh, may add shield slash buckler to the goblins. Um, I was thinking about adding like a small shield to some of the goblins' arms because they have spears. They might as well have a shield sometimes, I guess. You know, some of them at least. And then once that done, that's done, we'll move on. But that's the top of the sticky note. So that's what we'll work on first. Now, I want to think about why um, he's sometimes leaving his attack thing. And uh, the alert behavior goes off. So here's how it's going to work. Um, so how it worked. So he was in React, so he was attacking us. And then we attacked him. So he's getting the closest, highest priority target every frame. So he figured out, figures out who's the most uh, important person within his alert range, which includes his react range. Then we get the skill manager here. And we get and set the top priority skill. So this is whatever attack he's supposed to be using. Then we get the alert behavior thing here, and we get the top priority move tactic, which is what he's supposed to be doing in terms of movement. If the last move tactic equal it does not equal the new one that we just set, it means that we've suddenly changed conditions, and that enters us into alert state again, and it starts the timer. It sets the timer down to zero, rather. And then it breaks us out of this loop. Then we go back into here, and we do have to do some coding for this other type of entering the alert state, which happens when we get hit at a distance but anyways we go into alert state and um if we're not in like an alert cooldown we get the closest target and if they're so we always check this right we always check who the closest target is so if we're in this cooldown thing um i believe this is like when we get hit at a range so there's no one in our actual alert or react distance we get the target set and we just keep them there if it's not, then excuse me, we get the target just naturally. Um, so this is like the default what's happening here. 
And if there's no target in the alert range or our alert cone, because we can see further in front of it, us than behind, um, we just uh, get out of alert and we go back to neutral. This we could probably just say if closest highest priority target is null, then we go back to neutral. Uh, we could probably get rid of this. I'll keep it for now. Um, but anyways, once we establish that this is a thing and we're not exiting alert mode, there is someone that we are dealing with. We get our skill and we get our movement. So the skill, it should be the same as down here. Um, some of the cases, the movement should also be the same. If we went from here back up to here, um, that might be causing some type of problem in the transition. Uh, but let's just assume it's not. When the cooldown timer is greater than the duration, that means we can do this stuff, which is the ability to go back into the react mode. So it's possible that the issue is, is that the, the duration that we have is 0.25 is not long enough for us to break away. So if we put the 0.5, it might fix problems. Because what I think is happening is, although his movement thing has changed, he's going up to here, and he's just going back into React mode. And that would be the case because that's why he's attacking. We only attack for processing React behavior. So he's going back into React mode way too fast. That's probably what's happening. So we put it to 0.5. Let's see if we can replicate that behavior. I didn't really like this solution too much, but it worked. Um, if there's fine tuning that's needing done, um, hopefully we can fine tune it enough so that it works. Uh, if not, then we're just gonna have to switch to something else. But now we built a system on top of a system. That's why it's kind of like a little janky. We might eventually have to redo the whole thing. But with that point 0.5, he's not going to like... We want to get him in that combo there where he's comboed. He's running off. So it was the point 0.5 that was needed. And that attack range needs increased. Although on that attack, he actually is hitting us. You can tell because we're slightly bluer now. So we've become frosted. And we're moving a little bit slower. We're starting to heat up. So right now, he he's, this is not going to be the final boss or the final state of the boss. Uh, we don't want him to like run away constantly. Okay, so there he started the run, and then he went back to attacking. And then he did that behavior, which was good to see. But it's not terrible. It needs some work, but it's not terrible. So I'd say we can say that was the issue there, and we can move on to the strafe, distance, and block mechanics. So we're going to go into AI alert behavior, and this is where we did our runaway code. Um, we're going to have to fix the retreat from target now and the move retreat to location type of deal. Because we have this new way of doing this where we send out a bunch of raycasts, and we just like... So the I, this is what we did last time. I'll explain it again. We we get the I'll I'll explain it by highlighting the code rather because I think this is more intuitive um, than me going like this. Um, I'll try to do both. We retreat to direct or we get the direction to the target. So the target position versus us, minus us rather. Our position. We normalize that and then we turn it negative. So it's the, and that's opposite of the direction to the target. So we get the direction to the target and we just make it negative. So it's behind us or away from us, away from the target rather. Then we create a bunch of, we create some variables here and define an angle that we want to iterate by and we get a modifier value. And what this is, is that we go to this for loop of 14 raycasts. So 0 to 13, which is 14. 
and we do a modifier value here, which is um, i modulus 2, a condition that says if i modulus 2 is equal to 0, the modulus is um, essentially like what's left over after you divide by 2. So if we divide 1, or so if we say 1 modulus 2, uh, one there's one remainder, so it's not zero. If we say two modulus two, there's nothing left over when you divide. If we say three modulus two, two goes into three once, and then there's one remaining, right? So it's not zero. So that gives us a way to shift between one and negative one, because two is always going to be either, whenever you divide an even number by two, it goes into zero, because two is even as well, or two leads, you know, two's even, right? It leads to an even outcome. So, um, like 14 divided by 2 is 7, right? 2 goes in there without any remainder, but if it's 15, because 2 is an even number and 15 is an odd number, there'll be one remainder. So it gives us, the, it gives us a 0 or a 1. So using the 0 check, so this is like an if statement, and this is the ternary operator. We say, if this, if this statement says 0, and, we're and it's true, it is equal to 0, we're going to return a 1. If it's false, we'll return a negative 1. So then we go to uh, our check here, and we check the modifier value. If it's negative 1, we say it's an odd number. And what we're trying to do here is we have our initial direction, which is away from the target. And we want to go check if there's something interacting with that. We want to say, okay, now check here. Now check there. So we check 22.5 degrees to the left, and then 22.5 degrees to the right. And if those are hitting something, like a wall, like all of those are hitting a wall, the middle one and then the two left and rights, we say we'll add another 22.5 degree angle. So now we're checking 45 degrees on the left and then check 45 degrees on the right until something doesn't hit something. So that's what this is doing. So in order to get this, we want to say if it's an odd number, which is what this means, if it's an odd number, we'll say if it's an even number. Uh, if it's an odd number, we want to add one to it. So we want to say, if this is three, we want to say uh, add one, so it's four, divided by two, so it's two, and then times that by 22.5, because this is the second step. And then if it's five, make it six, divided by two, so it's three, so this is three times this, so it's the third step to the right. Um, or to the left rather. And then this one's the third step to the right when you do that. So it's it's just a way this is just a way of saying like, hey, make these because I play if this is if this is odd, when you add one, it makes it this even number as well. So these two will have the same result when you multiply it by angle. And then we uh it'll just be negative or positive, right? Because of our modifier value here. So we just def times it by modifier angle, but these will have the same angle. So it'll go up, um, it'll say like 0 at first, and then it'll say 22.5, and then 22.5, and then 45, and then 45, and then we take that modifier value here, and we times it by the angle to get a negative or a positive, because it's negative on an odd number, positive on an even number. And that gets us a new uh, ray rotation, angle axis, so an angle um, around this axis, which is vector 3 up. And we just times that by the retreat direction which was the original direction away from the target so we just angle that slightly off every time and then so we do a ray cast based off this new direction and if it's a zero if we it's i is equal to zero this is all going to be zero so the angle is just going to be zero so this would be by multiply by like a, an, an identity or a zero, whatever quaternions use. And if we raycast dot if the raycast hit after we raycast, it, there's no its transform is equal to null, so it hasn't hit anything. We just break out of the loop and we keep that. And then what we do is we um, we sample a position on the nav mesh to make sure that we're actually picking a spot that is part of the nav mesh and not off the nav mesh. And we just say that's the new direction. Or sorry, we say uh, our position plus the new direction. So in that direction, sample a position for us. 
and within this retreat distance. And then um, when we get that, we set that to the nav mesh destination. Very simple. I'll show you guys the top down view. Excuse me. And you can see how it works when he runs away. Uh, I'm, this might have been happening when I no, because I had it all maximized. So we'll hit cheat load in. I'm gonna hold the M or press the M button so it speeds up. So this is all in like double speed. The the main game will not go this fast. So you can see up here. I'm gonna block. I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna select the boss because I believe I have to select them for this. We're going to go up to the top, get a view of the arena, and then I will unpause the game. And then I'll hit him twice. And you'll see he's looking, those ray casts, because they're hitting a wall, they do... Well, the furthest one that hits the wall, there's going to be one on the right that goes further as well. So you'll see, we'll just chase him around, and he's going to, every time that... It hits a wall like this one does. He'll get a fourth one, and if this one's not, he'll get he gets, sticks with the third. But it's just steering him, right? He's steering him based off of the ray casts, and he'll find a way out there sometimes. He, he heals when he gets at least fit five distance away. You can see, like as soon as this one touches the wall, these two get summoned, because then this one gets the wall, and then this one it goes a left right uh, solution. So it goes forward, then it goes left, and then right. But you can just see how he's using these to navigate away from the wall, whilst also running away from us. So it's all he's always running away from us, or at least trying his best to. If we try to corner him this way, he's just going to keep going this way. Um, he wants to go this way, but there's a wall there because these are catching the wall. So you can see, like now, he's getting way more lines. Just because of the angle that we're tackling him at. He's just trying to get out of there. So that's how you do that. Um, you use these raycasts to just kind of like determine what's out there. And yeah, if we get around him, he'll turn around. Because it's all centered around this direction between us and him. And then the angles that are deviating from that. Now the only problem with this is like it's... Um, These lines are like just on the ground going out. So if there's like rough terrain, it could get a little messy. Bumpy terrain rather. Uh, he might not like recognize that like, hey, if there's like a little bump on the road and then there's a static object up there. I think it might, it might actually t come back and say, hey, there's terrain there. Don't go that way. I'm not sure. We'll have to test it. So it might work, but it, the fact that it's just a straight line, the raycasts, that is, uh, that can lead to issues um, with accuracy. Uh, I know some people do like multi-layer raycasts, so it's like on the bottom, at the midsection, and then the top of the model. Uh, I don't know if we need that here. I don't know if people really use that for that here, but they use it for other stuff. Uh, like ledge grabbing and stuff. Um, I've seen some tutorials that show that uh, ledge grabbing and all that stuff is done by just ray casting out from the hands to see where the ledge is. And then when they hit something, you just move the hand up. There's different, ray cast is a very interesting method of, um, animating and controlling characters. And it's just, it's just a line that gets drawn or like, uh, cast out mathematically from an origin to a direction, uh, with a distance. An optional distance. You can't have them have man. Uh, you can can have the raycasts have like maximum, like infinite list or length until they hit something or like even until they just keep going. I don't know. So that's how that works. Now we have to do strafing. The strafe is going to be an interesting one to do because we have to decide um we have to shift between normal player movement or sorry normal movement and uh lock on movement so the player has lock on movement so we'll go into the player and you'll see that 
when we're in locked in movement type control type, so we have two movement control types. Uh, well, we have a few, but we have primarily normal and locked on. And when it's locked on, we have lock on movement. So if we're standing still, we return to idle, um, which does have its own check for if weapons are equipped. But um, for the most part, we're just saying a different type of movement instead of idle movement or locomotion. And that's all we really have to do. But we also have to keep the rotation. Because if you're strafing uh, in combat, yeah, it usually means that you're like, you can strafe like if you're aiming something left and right, you can really just strafe whenever. But in terms of what we want, we kind of want him to go like left or right while facing the player. So we got to keep him rotated towards the player. Stuff like that. Uh, just one second. Um, so we gotta figure out how I did this, lock on, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure all anim mancers have this, oh, sorry, all anim managers. So we use animancer, but we have an animation manager class on top of it. So, I put a note here, it should only be called if movevec is not equal to zero. And we just normalize the move vector and we say to combat lock on animations, get clip based off of the uh, animations and we animate the base layer. Pretty straightforward. Uh, locked on animations though, where are those? It's based off combat locomotion speed. That's another thing we have to think. Um, I think I gotta have two separate speeds because it throws an error when I try to use both. Uh, okay. I made this a long time ago. I should have probably kept trying to fix that so it used one speed, but we'll roll with it. Um, we have combat locomotion mixer state. And it is, it finds does clip exist and it goes for equipped idle, equipped walk and combat run. So let's go to does clip exist. It checks our animation dictionary. Okay, so that's the important information I wanted to know. Because I've done a few different types of um, setups for the animation. I can show you about that. Or I can show you what that I mean about that here. So we have the human eye. So I don't know if I can find one of the old ones. There is an old, there's older, like, um, we'll just roll with this. I, I had to make this class animation dictionary because of how, um, the other way I was doing it, I didn't like just like a list of animations. This way I can have, um, a name for the animation. So a way to get the clip, the animation itself and an audio attached to it if I want audio. And then we also have combat lock on animations down here. I just don't know if I still use it this way. That's why I was trying to look at this. I actually think this is like wrong. I think this is not what I'm looking for because lock on movement, combat lock on animations, go to definition. Yeah, it's a directional animated set eight. So. What I was just looking at and I have the animation manager open, really? So when I look at lock on movement, it's using the combat lock lock on animations based off of the move vector. Um, what I was looking at up here the combat locomotion mixer state is actually the walking with equipment. So this is, I was looking at the wrong thing here. I'm just refreshing myself as I go. So what we were looking at here was that the player can equip and de-equip his shield and sword. And when he has the sword and shield equipped, he walks and idles and runs differently. I'm not sure I really like the animation right now. Um, it's good animations, don't get me wrong. I'm using... Um, uh, I believe it's Kevin Iglesias's um, animations for the Melee Warrior set. 
I have a couple animation packs here. I need. I want to get more. Um, but not all of them work with the mesh tint models super well. And I love the mesh tint models, so I don't want to change them. I really like them. Um, yeah, the mesh tint models are all these ones here. Um, except for this one and some of the other ones. But the characters, the villagers, and the main character, and these necromancer and the wizard king. Um, they're all from mesh tint, and I really, really like... Um, I'm really glad that uh, mesh tint decided to upload these for sale because um well this whole game like I wouldn't be built without these I, I essentially just took like I I, I when, before I decided to make the game I went on the, the asset store and I just looked through every single last page of assets like over and over and over again until I like decided okay this is the story I want to craft with what what story I can craft with this what story I can craft with those and I had a, a, a couple different assets picked out and then I decided to go with these ones and make this adventure game um, that I would like think about in my head as I looked at the assets. So yeah, that's how I did. That's how I figured out what game I wanted to make. Look at assets, think about what I could do with them in my head, build a story, and then say, okay, let's buy them. It was something roughly like that. This happened like a couple of years ago, so I I might be misremembering the exact sequence of events, but I really like these models. Um, so let's go into Uh, we'll click on. I need to sort out this hierarchy. We'll click click on this guy. Go to his animation man manager. Click on his things here, and we see that he has lock on animations of four. So he has a strafe left and right, and rock walk forward and backwards. Does the player have eight? Yeah, the player is eight. So they have um. They have forward, left, and forward, right. So they have a bit more range than this guy does. So hopefully it looks fine. Uh, but he does indeed have combat lock-on animations, but it's just combat lock-on animation is four. So we have to figure out how we get access to those. Okay, it's just literally saying lock on animations for or these. Uh, so I have to see here. So we'll pin the animation dictionary up here and we should have that. I should have grabbed that animation manager and we'll pin it up here as well so we can actually read this. So we know that we just have to pass a new. So we just have to like overwrite the movement so it passes on a lock on movement instead of like locomotion. I think. No, these take different values. So just move input. Move input is just Where is move input defined? I think that's just like the yeah. It's the um the left right it, it just, it's just literally the um, keyboard, get move input. So it's like whatever the player is putting in the keyboard or the joystick. So very simple. So in order to do this for an agent on the nav mesh, we're going to have to get um, probably just their direction minus the Y. So just the XZ direction. And then we can just put that through on a lock on movement. So let me just see here. So if I go into uh, alert behavior, um, we can say, let's just say like private void strafe left. Just something very simple. And we kind of have to like override uh, this. We have to put like a, a new enum because the way the move tactics works is it's an enum system that, because there's a very limited amount of movement options. So it's just like there's a condition that's met. And then when they're in that condition, they just move and there's a priority system. So it decides where they're going to move. They're going to add it to the end. I'm just going to say strafe. Ready, just strafe. 
And we'll just keep it simple for now. The hell? Base. AI alerted. Uh, strafe. That's on alert started, so we don't really need this. We'll just put it down here. And we'll just call uh, strafe left. And what we'll do is, is we have to set a destination. And then we have to update. Um, so it has to, where does the animation speed come into play for this? There's combat speed, right? So if we go to locomotion, it does uh, play. Um, but speed is equal to speed, right? And when we go into lock-on movement, it does not set speed. Oh, because it doesn't need to. Because it's not a mixer state. Right, so it's not going to need that. Um, so we'll go back to alert behavior. And we're going to have to get So if he's going to strafe light left, we kind of want to say um, vector three new direction equals uh, vector three dot left, vector three new position equals transformed dot position. And I think it's just like plus vector three plus new direction times like 10 or something. Uh, I believe that's how we do that. It, we'll check down here. Oh wait, no, we have to use the sample. So we, in order to keep ourselves on the nav mesh properly, we need we should do this. So we'll say new position, so new direction times retreat distance, we'll just say 10. So we don't actually need to define new position. And we just go into nav mesh agent and if we're on the nav mesh, which I don't know if we have to really have this, we just say hit dot position and we calculate the speed like this. But instead of locomotion, we have to say dot lock on movement. And we need a we need the move vector, which is just gonna be the um vector two dot um uh dot left. That's probably all we really need. No, I think that it would make more sense if we said new vector to um this vector to left might be like wrong. But if we do like this and we just say um new direction dot x and then new direction dot z that's why i don't want to say left because it might use like a like a weird i mean we can try it later we'll save that so this one might be easier to implement than i thought we also have to do a check for the lock on animations um so just real quick We need to say uh, combat lock on animations. Uh, yeah, here. So we have to say if they're null, use four. So if clip is equal to this, so we have to say like if animation dictionary combat lock animations is equal to null. Um, might be one of those things where you just use a ternary, like just put this here. Is if it's equal to null, if if it's not equal to null, use the first one. Else, take this and just say comment locomotion animations four. Uh, I kind of want to make sure they're both. So actually, let's just do a, if.
So we, we just grab this equal to null, and then we can say and this is equal to null, then just return. So if the combat lock if there's no combat lock on animations in either eight directions or four directions, they're both null. It just returns so we don't function do any of this function. Um, otherwise, we normalize the movement vector and then we say the clip is equal to uh, this, which it, or if it's not equal to null, the eight directions, we just set, set the eight directions. If it is uh, equal to null, then we just do the four directions because one of these has got to be true if this test is passed. And then we just play the animation. So we don't have to do any additional checks. That should work. Let's see it in action. I forgot to set him up, but that's fine. We can set him up here. So let's go to his uh, move. His AI alert behavior, which I should really change some stuff. And we'll just say strafe as his default. Um, and we'll just move his current tactic to strafe as well, just in case. That's not really... Turn off the gizmos. And he is strafing. Uh, just he's not targeting, um, he's not rotated towards the player. That's the problem. Is he moving though? Uh, I think he's out of our range. So yeah, he's just moving in the bad direction. Uh, but we got the animation playing. That's the important part. That's the... Part I wasn't sure about. This is going to be easy to fix. So the new direction is left. Take his current position and add the new direction. And that made him rotate left. So that made it. So when he sets destination, that means he moves towards that. So actually, shit. Um, because when we use set destination, I think that makes them, that makes them rotate towards the destination. Uh, crap. I never thought about that. Let's open nav mesh agent. I don't know if like turning off their maximum angular speed would work, like turning it to zero. So they can't actually rotate. Uh, and also, while I'm in this menu, I'm going to switch his default to strafe just so we don't have to do that again. Um, let me just see what happens if you play the game and move that to zero. I don't want to change it here. I'll change it on the actual person. Or the actual loaded in prefab so it doesn't save over. It still sets the destination behind him, but he's not rotating now. Um, not rotating by the um, set destination standards, right? So that means whenever we're strafing left or right, we're going to have to set the angular to zero. And then whenever we run away, we set it to whatever. So angular velocity. So that's solved at least. Dot angular speed is equal to zero. And it stops them from rotating 
towards their destination. At least that's what I think it does. I think. That's what it seemed to do. Uh, I'm not sure why the hip hop the opposition is. I must be doing this wrong. Uh, transformed opposition times. It's not times. Is it? You can't times two vectors together. Yeah. Out, do a raycast. For our position is where it'll start, and it'll start in the new direction times ten, and that should be where it was getting sampled. Also, we're gonna have to set this. Uh, I do want to check if vector two dot left would be similar. Oh, hold on, it's ah. Wonder. Transform dot right vector three dot left because uh the the what was happening I think and I'll show you when I load up the game um I think it was just uh the z axis is this way the forward z axis so left is literally this way. So it was just doing vector three dot left, so it's this way rather than the the left that's based off of this guy. So it should it should do the thing now. So there we go. Is that the right animation though? No, it's the wrong animation. Doing it before. There he looks like he's going forward. Uh, unless it's not the, it could be actually that it is doing the right animation. Um, it's just that we've put in, we're put it, we've put in the wrong. Yeah, walk forward in place. It's not doing this walk forward, so it is the right. It's um, it's how we did the vector two dot direction here. Um. Ah. Uh, And I believe this is already normalized. Can't remember. Don't think we have to do that. Uh, but this definitely works, right? Like we do get a position to the left. Or yeah, negative this negative makes the transform dot right to the left, obviously. Um he's not rotating. He needs to rotate towards us, we'll fix that later. But he's not rotating based off of the nav mesh agent. So we might have to change that. We might keep that. Um, so what did I do wrong? Lock on movement. This is where it's wrong. It's um, direction.x and z. That makes him go forward.
I don't know. Um, it's it's this is clearly what's wrong. Can I get Victor to? I can't remember if there's a way to like change a vector two to a three or three to a two. I know that sounds weird actually. Yeah, I don't know why they would have that. Do you just do a debug dot log of the new direction? Just to see what it's at, what values are actually getting used. Maybe it's it's wrong. It should just be the players left. Oh, it's one on the Z axis. Right, 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 right. Okay, I see. Uh, so our right is, or his left is actually one on the Z axis. So if we use that for the lock on movement, it's going to make him go that way. So we have to figure out a way to say, hey, he's actually going left. So it's something about the forward his forward and his direction that he's moving in that's something we have to calculate so we have to say like um like vector to move direction say move vec it's gonna have to equal um call it a vector three so we don't have to translate it Equals, I think it's transform dot forward times new direction. Um, plus maybe. And we'll output that first. Ah, uh, that math might be wrong. Or hell, we'll just say move back uh, X and Z. We just want to we want to get the um transform the 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 left direction is actually not representative of how he's moving really, if that makes sense. Like how he's straight, like he's moving in that direction, but it's not how he's he's moving left himself. So it's something like that. Yeah, see. Oh, is that left or right? That looks like he's trying to move this way. Strafe right. So he's trying to strafe right. So we have to get this to say left. So I don't know if it's supposed to be min minus new direction.
I don't think I have this mixed up. I think it's X then Z. It does get normalized. It doesn't need to be right now, but it does. Um, because it's it's normalized already in, in this case. Um, I mean logically, like if this adds the opposite, if we say negative direction, it might move it for what we want, but I just I don't know if that needs to be negative. We'll find out. Oh, I guess it's like um that's how we get direction to target, right? So maybe it's like that. Because if it was far forward, it would be See now he's going backwards. He's uh walking backwards in place. <laughs> We've got him to walk in every direction we want except for or every direction we don't want. Uh, and I can't multiply these. Maybe it is like I want Z then X. I don't. I don't recall that being the case because move input is here and move input is set. By X here and then Z here. Oh, but X is on the right and Y is the forward. And that. So maybe it is backwards. Maybe I had that wrong. I'll actually look at the debug. If I can't, if this doesn't work, I'll look at the debug and I'll actually like look at the values and figure it out. Because it'll be the transform plus the direction added together. So now it's forward. He's walking forward. It's one and one. So one X and one Z. So even if these were switched around, it wouldn't matter. So if we do minus, It looks like it's working. Yeah, straight left. So it needs to be negative one on the Z and one on the X. So it does need to be minus, but it needs to be shifted this way. So that means it's saying negative one on the X. Okay, so the Z is negative one. And the Y is, or the X, that's getting put into the second place here is just one. And that equals this direction. Okay. Now we got to rotate around the player. So we have to say, um, I think we just say look at. Um, closest. 
or what is AI doc? No, AI component. Close this high. Yep. Yeah. I think that might do it. I don't think that's a, the correct way, but we'll just try that for now. I think we want it to be more like a, um, a spherical. Um, we want it to like be over time rather than instance. So this could look really weird. Um, Cause if we do it this way, it's just going to instantly snap. And then if we move around, it might grab. And he's still moving left. So until he gets there, what what direction is he moving now? Walking forward, strafe left. I think it's switching between them. Walk backwards. Uh, okay, so the we I'm doing it wrong. That's why it's being weird. So it should just be always in one direction. But he's strafing, like he is strafing around us. So this is wrong entirely. Yeah, just because I had it backwards, it's just supposed to be new. Because I had it one way at one point. So maybe I just have this completely wrong. And it's just supposed to be the new direction. Because that's what I had at first, and then I switched it. Because it's it's related to the forward already, so why would I have to add that? So yeah, I think I messed up there. Because transform right is already related to the forward. In a way. Oh, he's just switching between them again. And we can see how it just it's changing. Let me let me like left. So we need vectors vector two. And left is um it's x and then y, so I think it's um, negative one, zero. Right is one, zero. Uh, up is zero, one, and down is zero, negative one. So just for sake of curiosity, if I put Negative one here and then zero, we should just always do the strafe. I'm just going to debug on that right. Oh, it's because he's rotating as well. So if he's always rotating, it might make it slightly off. There's always strafing left now. Hence from the right is different depending on where he is in the world. Well, I'll get rid of the collapse here. Do you see like it goes from negative one on the left side to like negative one on the right side? Or it goes from one to negative one. It goes through a cycle depending on where he's facing. So it needs to be uh, um, like a localized, so it's always this. Let me just say that. 
Um, it needs to be always like in world space. Or uh, local space than world space. I don't know. Because eventually, eventually we don't want this to be called strafe left. We want it to be called strafe. So it's left or right. Or maybe we do want like a left strafe and right strafe. I'm not sure. I think it'd be better if... Well, it'd be better to have both, but it'd be nice to have like the choice to do left or right. Yeah. This is very simple. I'm just not getting it. That's just the problem here. Transform dot local Euler angles, local rotation. Um, I guess if we got like the, because we know the direction, um, it just, it's not, uh, what we want. Because it's always changing depending on world space. So we have to translate it to local space. So I think that's just like, kind of, that's like some equation. Something like this. I'm just going to keep. Did you say dot normalized? I'm just going to keep randomly doing stuff until it works. Until we get the right numbers. So I'll, I'll make like a couple different debug logs and la label them and then just we'll spit out. A bunch of values at once trying a bunch of different configurations until it works until we get the right numbers getting spat out so we know this is wrong because it's, it's changing rapidly so we'll, we'll deal with that um i'm going to brb real quick before we do that so i'll be back
Okay, I have returned. Okay, so we just want to get the direction. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I was trying to get the f this, but um, it could be. We do transform dot position minus movement manager dot agent dot destination. That could do it. Because that is technically where we're headed. It's just that because he's rotating, um, it might screw with it. But I was hoping that transform dot right would just be like where if he's rotated. It should always just be um we'll see what that does. We'll just output that. Because we'll look at the debug and if it's uh, if it's negative one here, then we know it's correct. Also, cheers everybody. Got myself some bubbly water. That is not correct. This is a silly thing to be stuck on. Very silly thing. We'll figure it out, but it's a very silly thing. It's one of those things that like should just be like, boom, this is how you do it. I've done stuff like this before. It's just like, the hell is it? How do we get this negative one? Consistently, that is. So this is the direction in which the player is going. And they're facing inward, so it should just be left all the time. But it's not, so that's the wrong thing. Um, I thought transform not right would be... I mean, transform not right definitely works. Wait, what if I did this? Just normalized it. I'm going to do this. Um, plus new dir do that okay new new dir new direction and we'll try um just try a bunch of different things and see what they spit out I'm just going to keep moving values around until it consistently gives the right value. Or I could just Google it. I could just Google it. But that's no fun. So a new direction is always one. 
Forward plus new direction is almost there. Now, now it's off. Forward plus new direction is almost always negative one, it seems. Except for when it's not. I mean, obviously the easiest way to say is like, if we're going this direction, we're doing transform, because we have to select why we're going left any or this direction anyways. We just say like, hey, if, if new direction is negative transform dot right, then the move vector is going to be left. Negative transform dot right. It's just that I feel like that should be, there should be a way to like make that into like to do something mathematically with this direction and just say like this is the way we're going. I guess we uh just roll with it. And we have to get the rotation. Wait, say movement dot um rotate to towards or that rotate towards target transform rotation. It's not right. Um Movement manager. We have a bunch of different. Oops. We have a bunch of different uh, rotation techniques, so it should be one that we can just. I'm pretty sure we have one that does a vector. Set rotation. I guess set rotation would work. Yeah, I guess we got to use set rotation. So we'll go um, alert behavior. Oh, so movement manager. Set rotation. And we just say quaternion dot look at rotation. And um. in that so that'll make it rotate a lot more smoother uh, maybe it's a quaternion um, let me see quaternion dot angle no
I was wrong. Oh, that's right, because it's set rotation. Uh, we want to rotate towards. I think I actually had to rotate towards. It didn't use a target, and I got rid of it. I took a vector 3 instead. And now I understand why that was silly. Why I had it in the first place. All we have to do is this, and then that, that works. So we'll go back to movement. So what am I doing? Why why dot rotate towards target and then just put the AI component dot um target. Supposed to supposed to yeah, like why dot transform. I don't know why that wasn't popping up in my mind. as an available option. That's exactly what that was made for. There's always a like split second where he gets moved over here that you can see the trail just like from the frosting just blaze. I should probably turn off that speediness. So that's him rotating towards us. There's a bit of a, like a preference here, it seems. I don't know what that is. If he's just getting further away because he's not rotating fast enough, that could be it. We'll have to see. Um, that might be an issue to address. I think when he was at transform dot rotate instantly, it wasn't like this. He kept a certain distance. Because here, when we do rotate towards target, there is a uh, there's a delay. The duration. Do this. That way I don't have to update the other functions. It'll just automatically do it. Then I can go into a left behavior and we can say three point. 5F or something like that. that. Make it happen faster. I'll try something. Transform dot rotation. Times
He has left the building. Oh, the captain is screwed up. Oh, because the captain doesn't have any skills. I'm just going to try more stuff until I figure something that works. Uh, I wanted to see his rotation there, but clearly he... How much better he does when he rotates fast, but clearly he went out of range. Uh, got stuck over there, so getting him out of there when he only moves left would be a pain. I'd have to make him chase and bring him back out here again. He's just getting further away. Um, and that's actually probably because the rotation happens after. Maybe if we set the rotation first. Like um, up here, I mean. Because then the transfer from that right would be based off of the rotation rather than the other stuff. That's actually probably what it is. This was wrong. Yeah, I don't know. There's a way to get that information based on where he's going. Um, I'm just having a hard time figuring that one out. So Dealey would figure out what direction he's going in if he's based on if his transform or his position and then and then we'd say left like we'd be able to determine if he's moving left or right. Okay, that was really bad. 
That was awful. Yeah, so if we did like, um, I guess transformed opposition minus the, um, hit the opposition. So where we're going, so the direction to where we're going relative to his forward. So how would I do that? Minus. It's something like this, because we get our forward where we're facing the direction that we're moving in, and, be and then that will, because the direction we're moving in doesn't matter. It, it matters that. To get to get to understand that we're moving like strafing left, not just moving left, but strafing left, we have to have it relative to our forward. So the if we're facing this way, because if we turn, because if we're say okay, go that way, and then we're turned, like left is like this isn't the left we're talking about. Like we want left from like our forward. So it's it's something roughly like this, I suppose. So we'll see what that spits out. And also this is now not, this rotate towards target is not exactly what, um, we need We need something to keep him in bounds. Or within distance. So they need to rotate faster. So I think that's actually a bad way to do that. The way I had before was probably the superior way. It is that it kind of makes it snap. Instead of like rotate over time, which is not exactly what we wanted. And another problem of testing this is that he only goes left, so it's not like it matters where we are necessarily. Um, it does because he'll rotate towards us, but there's nothing other than just go left. But he, do he does seem to stay in place. Oh, actually, it's when we put the speed up that it starts to screw up. Never mind. That. What did I have? Minus? And it should actually be normalized as a full, not just those two. I should try the other calculation then. Just put plus. Copy it. Then we'll try something else like um L see if any of these give us the desired result. Yeah, I guess all we have to do is like say, hey, is the direction we're going on our left? Because the rotation is now taken care of. So it should always be on our left. No, like L here. Do not print out these ones. Mm 
Na. So L negative, L plus nothing. Yeah, they all they all switch. Um so like obviously they switch, but they're not giving us what we want. This might be frustrating for people. Um but I just don't want to Google it because I if I if I figure it out, then I understand it better. Right? If I Google it, then it's gonna be like whoop the so in the VODs, uh, the live stream, everyone's screwed. The VODs, uh, you might want to skip ahead 15. It shouldn't take too long to figure this out. We have a forward position where we're facing, the direction to where we're headed. Or this is the this is the destination minus our position. So this is the direction. Oh, I didn't switch these to negative. I didn't test these. Try that one more time there. Roll well, that series of inquiries. See if that works. Yo, hey, how's it going, Trues? Welcome to the stream. We're uh, working on some strafing mechanics. Hope you've had a great day. We're just trying to get this, um, trying to get a certain value to get, a, a certain value to, uh, Emerge from the math, which I'm not super good at. How goes dev work? It's going great. Um, I mean, it's going good. A little slow right now, but it's going. Going pretty good. Good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah, we're trying to get these values down here to spit out like a negative one. Uh, consistently a negative one. I'd all, I could also hard code this in. Straight speed stuff, yeah. We're also, uh, yeah, we're trying to because there's um, we're getting him to strafe to his his left, and uh, it keeps. It, I need to get a negative one on this x for an x value. So there's a way to do it. I just can't remember how to do to do the math on it. I can also just like hard code this in. Just uh, do an enum or something. Left strafe. Put equals. Just do something like this. A new vector. Well, actually, I would use an enum for this and just do a uh, switch for it. You hear the cool Digimon crossover news? I have not. Uh, what's the crossover? Digimon X Godzilla? Yeah, that's crazy. That sounds pretty cool, though. They made War Greymon and Godzilla into one thing. Interesting. Let me just let me just Google that real quick for a virtual pet. I'm gonna just Google that. Digimon Godzilla. Oh, that looks sick. 
He's got the claw on the right hand, but um, not on the left. I would have never expected them to do that. That's pretty cool. That work is badass. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, I wouldn't have expected that. That's interesting. I like the purple. With the crystals and stuff. Uh, as a big fan of Godzilla and Digimon, I'm extremely hyped. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I've never been, like, I've I've enjoyed Godzilla movies. Um, but I've never been, like, super into it where I know all the characters. But I've seen most of the movies. Uh, there was a Monster Hunter one before this, but I ain't got, uh, I ain't into the game series too much. I didn't know there's a Monster Hunter one. That's cool. I, I played a couple of Monster Hunters, but I'm not, like, huge into it. Yeah, I've seen like almost. I, I think I've seen most of the Godzilla movies because my um, one of my friends, he's very much into Godzilla. Uh, so um, we would watch Godzilla movies when we hanged out. Uh, Greymon, Raphalos, and uh, Zunogar Garumon. Cool. Uh, I, I might actually look those ones up too. I'm gonna let my subconscious or my my other brain parts process this problem the code and maybe after i google this i'll come back and it'll be solved in my mind raymond raffalos okay that's cool <laughs> i like that one it's just the raffalos with like uh Greymon put on his head with the different stripes oh and then that's the Gromon one looks spiky that's pretty neat I do really like the Greymon one. I uh, need a bri brain reset uh, with my past Digimon crossovers. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, I... It's such a simple problem that I'm working on, too. I just I can't think of the medical equation. Math time? Yeah. I'm just I'm gonna write out what I what I have and what I need. So we have a forward direction. We have a right direction or a left in this case. We have a direction of movement, and we need. Uh, we need a local. Base negative one on X. But maybe that's my problem is I'm trying to because we're we're not like we're moving on the X axis, but it's it's getting converted to world space, I think. Um where we're kind of moving like because if it's local then our our um here, I'm going to open so I can visualize it, too. I find that when I try to explain things, what I'm trying to think about, it helps me figure it out. So if we're on global... Like this, the world space keeps moving. If I switch to local space... His x-axis updates with him. So I have to get the local um, so I have to translate like where it is relative to his local um, axis. Constant stream of thoughts can help filter out what you need. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I find that when I'm talking about something, like, it kind of keeps me, like, like, just, like, I, I or when I try to explain something, like, it, it, it re, like, circulates that information in my own mind and just helps me, like, solve. 
or try to explain how I think I'm supposed to do this. So if we get the if we want the local space, we have his rotation. And um I think that from the rotation and the forward we can get the the local left. I think what is transform right? It's uh the red axis of the transform in world space. I don't see it says world space, but I thought it was supposed to be right. So this is world space. So this is so we need it to be. What is what is what if I debug dot log, and I say um, local plus direction. And we add uh, transform dot dot local position plus um, the direction. Uh, wait, no, that doesn't make any sense. Why would that work? All right, anyways. How long have you been working on the project altogether? Uh, probably about two years. I, I believe it's about two years. This might be, it, it might be coming up on three years. It's been a bit. It's gone through a couple different iterations. Um, and I think there's about like two years left, probably. Probably take about two years to finish it. Very nice, yeah. For um, for like the first indie game I I'm gonna release, I I chose a very large project, unfortunately. Um, you plan plan to put out a demo at some point next year? Yeah. Um. Once I finish the jungle area, um, yeah, the how do I show the jungle area? It's it's just like um, I guess I don't show it that way. Yeah, I guess the, the there's a once I finish the jungle area, which is pretty much just this uh temple, and then um a couple of these like jungle uh areas here. Um, there's just like a couple of these. Once I finish these, then I'll be able to start like play testing it and making it all work. Um, and then I'm gonna try to get a demo out. So I'm hoping to get that done by like February or something. I wanted to get it done by the end of the year, but it's um, taking a while. I'd love to test run it at some point. Uh, looks like a fun adventure. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, that would be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh so yeah, I should have a demo at some point. So hopefully within the next like three, four, or five months. There's every every time like it's it's a dev is like every time you have a deadline, it almost always seems to like uh take longer. Just because there's always a bunch of bugs. I can get the local rotation. We're going to just output the local direction or rotation. See what this uh, value is. Uh, nice. I'll be sure to come by when I can see uh, to see how it progresses. Awesome. Thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah, we have a, a steady progress right now. So it's it's been steadily getting better, or progressing rather. Um, ever since I started streaming, it's been going a lot faster because I just focus so much more. So I'm hoping I can get this all done within the next like three or four months. The the demo that is, yeah. Oh, okay. This is a lot of values. Uh, let's just, well, not that button. We got um scroll down to the bottom here. The local plus direction. Did I do that wrong? 
Oh, they can't be added together like that. That's why there's two values. The local ro rotation is negative one. So, um, oh, it's always negative one. Oh, never mind. This might be might be on to something here. I'm not sure. Interesting that the local rotation always has a negative one in it. That's definitely what we want. There's so many values here. Oh, they're, they're okay. Never mind. The rotation does not. Okay. Um, so that's, I think we're on to something here. It's just that's not it. Uh, we don't need the local position. The local rotation. Probably don't even need that. Probably just the rotation itself. Um, I wonder if I say quaternion dot look rotation, it creates a rotation with a specified forward and upwards direction. And I say uh, new direction. What is that? That Euler angle. What does that even look like in terms of like a value? Get rid of these ones for now. Because look at rotation, um, it creates a rotation with specified forward. So if the rotation towards the new direction, uh, Euler angles just makes it like a vector three. Um, so we can, no, yeah, hold on, damn it. It's so confusing. Uh, I might actually have to Google this. Uh, I've been stuck here for, I think, almost an hour. There's a point where it just, uh, we ain't going to figure it out. Well, I mean, we could, but it's just like going to be throwing out values over and over again. And it's such a simple thing to even do in the first place. I'm surprised, um, surprised I'm having difficulty of this. But it is what it is, right? This is how we learn. Oh, did I break it? Uh, it sounds like it can be a pain to get the little tw tw tweaks just right. Yeah. Yeah, If uh, I don't have like a super strong math background, so... Um... I, I, when I was in college, I did vector math and matrix math, but it's been so long that I just can't remember it. So it's just these um, 
these few things that just uh I'm a little bit lost on. And it's just a Google away, like it's it's just I don't I try not to Google things if I can help it, because then I feel like I just retain the information better. Uh, did I break this? Busy for a minute twenty. Uh, do you join in any discords that do game dev? No, I don't. I don't really use Discord at all. Like I have it, but I the most I use it for is like if I want to talk to my brother. That's pretty much it. So I'm never on it. He's always bugging me to get on it because he sends me stuff and he's like, "Did you see it?" And I'm like, "Nope, not yet." <laughs> Once every two weeks or something. Okay, I think I got to close this whole program. Yeah, one second. I'm just going to I'm going to be here, but I'm going to put the screen up so I don't dox myself somehow if it's possible. Control shift, uh escape, unity. That's no, nothing doxable here. Uh end task. Never good when that happens. Yeah, Discord's never really been my thing. I had like I used to use Skype and then everyone moved to Discord and I just like stopped using like all types of like Skype and Discord altogether. So I never got into Discord and now everyone's on Discord. It's just confusing to me. It can be useful to get secondhand perspectives from fellow devs. You'd be surprised how helpful people can be when you ask about a problem. I have a few dev discords I'm in and lots of devs ask questions and help each other. Yeah, I've seen um And then it just help. Oh, my mic is shit. I wonder if that's because uh, Unity's opening. Um, I have, I, I don't know if it still is. I have this NVIDIA thing, uh, NVIDIA broadcast. And I think that when I have um, a lot of stuff going on and uh, the, the program loading, I think it conflicts with the, um, the AI being able to process the um, audio or something. But I think it I think it definitely is the loading of the program. I think it's like two things like getting overwhelmed. Uh then we have some cones. Okay, we're back. Okay, now I gotta like control S this after changing something so it reloads. Let's see what yeah, and someone was saying like a uh, last stream that my thing was crackling a bit, so I got I got to figure that out. Oh, and this just gives us the rotation on the Y. I wonder if I can use that somehow. Uh, I can hear you now. I didn't hear you, uh, you say what you said with the dev discords. Oh, yeah. Um, I've seen... Um, I haven't used, like, the dev discords, but I've seen a lot of people post their game development on uh, Twitter and stuff and Reddit. And there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of very helpful dev... Like, like it, it, it is surprising how many people help out. There's a lot of devs who are just um, really involved. It's nice. I wonder if there's like a vector three dot like local. You can also find helpful devs out there on socials too. Blue Sky has been pretty nice. Oh yeah, yeah. I started um when you told me me about Blue Sky, I started posting there. Um, there's a I think it was like I think like a bunch of people just reposted my um stuff, like just like four. But compared to like Twitter where nobody really reposts, um, I was surprised how uh, nice people were there. Yeah, Blue Sky seems to be a good place. I 
think I might have to Google this. I gotta go add you then real quick. Oh, thank you. I'll uh, add you back. Probably get some eyes on your stuff too. Oh, thank you. That'd be appreciated. Very much appreciated. Yeah, Blue Sky seems to be the place to be right now. Um, yeah. The forward direction, left direction. Like if it's something as simple as just normalized. No, that didn't work either. Okay, okay. Um been working on this for like an hour i cannot get this to go so i think i'm going to google it and we'll figure out from there and we'll go through it um or no i'll ask ChatGPT, because then i can show it the code and ask it specifically and then it can tell me what i did wrong uh, i want to say Want the lock on movement to to calculated and have it find that we are moving left. Let's see what ChatGPT says about that. Thank you very much for the uh, post on uh, Blue Skies. I uh, really appreciate that. It was very kind of you. Yeah, I'll give you a follow back. Much appreciated. Yeah, the vending machine is pretty top tier, eh? I like that vending machine a lot. Reminds me of Digimon World 1. Well, that's what inspired it. Okay, let's see what ChatGPT said. Yeah, I have to calculate the movement direction in local space. So I, I had the right idea. The local rotation and stuff. Inverse transform direction? I'm going to copy these three lines that are um that make up the meat of this. Well, it's actually the only difference. And then uh we'll see. Uh no worries, dude. I like what you're doing and think it needs more eyes. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh that means a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so um desired velocity, I have no idea what that means. Well, I guess it's the desired desired velocity. Um of the agent including any potential contribution from avoidance. Um, so I didn't know this was even a thing. Uh, I have a good amount of uh, Digimon followers, so hopefully they cast the reference with the vending machine. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. 
Hell yeah. Yeah, those are vending machines in Digimon World 1, and uh, even in Next Order, but specifically Digimon World 1. Uh, they just always stood out to me. And I, I thought they were just such a cool, like, art direction. Digimon World 3 has, like, a couple, like, like well, a lot of cool references as well. Like in uh, Diamond area, where you have, there's, like, a keyboard in the background. They're very memorable, yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's what I like a lot about the Digimon worlds. All those, like, mixtures of um, random computer parts and circuit boards and stuff. I like seeing the plugs sticking out of the ground. Yeah, those are cool. And the uh, L the uh, LED screens or the um, the little like screens that show you where you're going that are in the floor. Yeah, just top tier. This is a great art direction for that. Look, to convert the movement direction to local space, we do inverse transfer transform direction. Transforms a direction from world space to local space. I had no idea this was a thing. Uh, hopefully the next story game touches on that art direction again. I heard it'll take place in the digital world. Hell yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Um, yeah, because the Digimon story games, um, I think you visit... Um, well, this might be a spoiler for people who haven't played it. So just spoiler alert. alert. Um, one, two, three. Yeah, okay. So I'll say this further. You kind of visit the digital world, I believe, for a little bit, if I remember correctly. And it's it's just a small section. I wish I I hope the next one does it more. Um, I'm pretty sure you do. I remember like seeing like a green area. Yeah, it was just a taste. Yeah, I think you'd like just visit native forest or something. Um, the, if if the next one's in the digital world more, that would be so cool. I really hope that's the case. I like I like Eden and Kowloon and all that stuff, but I, I if it was in the digital world, like that would be that'd be like fifty times better. Okay, I'm gonna put in the move input. I will actually see if this works. Because ChatGPT can be wrong. One of the things about ChatGPT and coding that's like kind of nice is that um, it just kind of it tackles specific problems and you get like a lot of explanations for things. Okay, I need to slow them down. Uh, I, for oh, I forgot to put in the thing to print out the output, but as we can see, he is in fact going to the left. So it works. Uh, for sure, uh, the Olympus uh, 12 will be the main Digimon, so that's promising too. Olympus 12? I'm gonna Google that one. Olympus 12. Was oh, it the Royal Knights? Uh, or oh, no, 12 Gods of Olympus. I haven't I haven't heard of these ones. Oh um hold on, I, I know some of these guys. Uh they're kinda like the Royal Knights, but Greek and Roman inspired. Oh, that's so like Marzamon. Um I know him. Yeah, yeah. I I just have the the image up here of like um what is it the twelve of them. I recognize like three from the older games. Uh, Digimon World three, you can get Marzamon. I know that. Uh, Titamon's there, and I can't remember what the the Viking Valkyrie woman is called. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that next game.
Uh, Apollomon, Dianamon. Okay, I, I recognize Dianamon. And I probably, if I saw Apollomon uh, from Dawn and Dusk. Yeah, see, I never, I never played those ones, unfortunately. Uh, maybe I'll have to try to emulate those. And dude, Robo Lion Knight. Robo Lion Knight. Oh, okay, I see him. I still have the picture up. There's like a cool. Uh, I just googled it and I found some cool. Um, the you get according to your favorite. Okay. Yeah, they look sick. Oh yeah, the, I remember. I recognized Animon. Marsmon. And where and I don't I don't have the names up here, but I recognize like three or four of them. Didn't know they were part of um a thing. Okay, so this is how we got the thing. So I didn't okay, so inverse transform direction is something I'm gonna have to add to my library of um or my what is it called repertoire? My vocabulary of things. I didn't realize this was an option. And we're getting the desired velocity, so we're using where we're set here. Um, from the agent, the navmesh agent. And then we're saying we're just creating a 2D vector. BRB, all right, all right. So I'm happy I, I looked it up. I, I don't think I would have ever figured this out. I mean, I kind of did. Like, I started doing the local rotation and stuff like that. Um, I did get the right idea. It took a while, but we kind of got it. We started trying to find the local left and stuff. Uh, but I just didn't have the vocabulary to use this info, inverse uh, transform direction. Can we see the definition of this? Like, is there any way I can actually find out what, where this is called? Go to base. Is that what I do? No, I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. This is interesting though. It's nice to find, um, uh, one, it's nice to find out that it wasn't my, um, my math, so to speak. It kind of was, it kind of wasn't like. I was trying all these different like options and that just wasn't it. Um, I had the right idea uh, after like an hour, but it, it's nice to see that it's nice because we learned some stuff, right? That's why it's nice. It's because we, we looked at it and we've tried a bunch of different ways. And now that we've uh, Googled it, we can really internalize the mistake um, or the lack of knowledge. And then we can internalize the solution here. So it's just desired velocity. So we're just getting the movement direction. This could have probably also been, this here could have probably just been the same as like um, that thing I did where I got the transform position uh, subtracted from the agent destination. That would have probably given us the direction as well. Because uh, the desired velocity is the Desired velocity of the agent, including any potential potential contribution from avoidance. So this is the direction it's trying to go, which would be related to um, the destination minus its current position. So this is a nice thing to add to our tool set, this desired velocity. Uh, because uh, I, I imagine if we just take our, our uh, destination and where we are, it's a straight line, but with this, it says the potential contribution from avoidance. So if there's like a, a thing in the middle, it can tell us what velocity, which is the direction as well of where it's going to like shift around that object. So we can get, this is like an updated real time of like a better direction. It's a shorter, like, like if you had like, if you had to think of it, like, um, a line between where we're going and where we are, it's just one line. That's the direction. Where this has like a bunch of potential lines as it advances past that line that can go around objects. Like a bunch of lines that keep be getting created. I mean, I think that's one way to think of it. Kind of like our raycasts that we had out before. Um, so that's nice. 
Can we visualize this with the... Uh, movement direction here. If I put this here, it does not exist in current context. Take this and put it here. I want to see, um, I want to see this visually. Local movement direction. Hit Shift F and we'll close the animation stuff here and we'll open up the AI alert and that should allow us to see um, what he's doing. So we have, so that's the Raycast there. But kind of like, I mean, it's updating really fast, so it kind of goes all over the place, but yeah, that is the direction where he's headed. And we just turn that desired velocity into local movement direction. And that just transfers that into like a zero one. Okay. Well, that's cool. That's good to know. Good to have. And we'll just keep ChatGPT's no no notes here because that's good to have too. Back, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, we've tested some of this stuff here. It seems to work pretty good. Uh, now, what I do need to do is I need to set the angular velocity or angular speed back when we're not strafing left. Nice. We need ChatGPT's help, but we got it. And that means uh, we learned, which is good. Now I just have to figure out how to sort this back to... I believe it was 120 when it started here. I'm going to just get a, an int. I'm going to define an integer. And we'll say default angular speed. And I think it's 120 to start. Um, oops. But when we end it on start, we'll say um, default angular speed equals uh, get component or rather movement manager dot agent dot angular speed oh it's got to be a float uh, also i should do this actually let's uh, move this into the movement manager itself it doesn't need to be here the movement manager will take care of it let's throw it like right in here Food delivery just got here, so I will be lurking for dinner. Good luck on the dev work. All right, uh, thanks for hanging out, and uh, enjoy your lurk. Enjoy uh, the dinner, too. And thanks again for um, the uh, Blue Sky post. Very much appreciated. Thank you. I'm going to take the default angular force here, and we're just going to get agent... Uh, default or sorry angular speed speed why is it, did I say force what did I no okay I have it speed here and then in the alert behaviors I we'll have to say, like when we exit strafe, we um 
we change the angular speed back. So what we're going to do as well is we're going to call this strafe now. And we'll figure out um, how we're going to make this change depending on a random variable or something. Because uh, well, we could have like strafe left as a, um, a strafe left and strafe right. Because it's either we tell the the AI which way it is strafe because strafe because it does matter. Um. Uh. Well, it it will matter. It, at least it should. Because uh, just real quick, I don't know if the debug lines ready for the blocking but we'll see and if it's not there i'll just like kind of like highlight it in a way i actually mentioned this earlier in the stream but um when we're blocking there's a um okay we don't have lines there's a 30 degrees on each side or 60 degrees on each side. I can't remember what it is. And if we get hit from behind, it's a no go. But eventually in the future, what we would like is probably the shield to be because it's on the left side. Um, like in Dark Souls, if you play Dark Souls, it matters if you strafe left or right a little bit. Uh, because depending on what arm the shield is up, like the I, there's like Ideally, that 60 degree angle should be coming from the shield, right? Or like that angle should be coming from the shield. So if you strafe left, you're strafing into the shield. If you're strafe right, strafing, um, sorry, if you're strafing right, like if this guy is strafing left, he's strafing away from the shield. If he's strafing this way, he's strafing into the shield. And that should matter a bit. Um, maybe not in the scope of this game, but you could like imagine how that would like if we like stop locking on, suddenly he's more open to attacking us on the right side. Where if we were lock if he was strafing the other way and we stopped, he would have a more of an angle where he's met with shield. But we could always just have them all strafe to the right. Or sorry, strafe left away from the shield. That that would be a little weird though. Um but if we have, for example, and actually now we have the ability to test this or show this uh, because we have the function working. If we go into alert behavior, we'll add another tactic and we'll say um, strafe, excuse me. We'll say chases on default. Hopefully that doesn't make errors. And we'll add is target blocking. So now he should strafe left whenever we block. And this is kind of like what I was going for. Um, in a way, there's two things I wanted to do. I wanted one, he, he has a spear, so or a glaive now, I guess. Um, but it is a spear with two ice runes on the end. Uh, so I want, he, 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 like, as an AI, he would understand that he has, sorry, as like a person, like, and you see here, here now, whenever we block, he starts to um, strafe to our, our non-shield side. So that's kind of like a... So if we walk around him, when he... Uh, well, that needs fixed. When he's locked into us... Okay, he's a little stuttery. But you see, like, he's trying, he, he'll always, like, try to get to our left side. And then if we walk to his right, right, he tries to, like, mirror us almost. So there's some, like, element we can make out of that, of gameplay, like, intelligence for the chieftain. Uh, but also, um, because he has a spear-like glaive thing, um, we have that thing where if we're, like, a certain distance away, he will use, maybe it's not set up. Or I think it's, it's set up, it's just the distance is, like, five right now because it's being shared with the heal skill. Um, because he has that range, whenever we like back up, he should, or whenever we block, he should back up so that when we stop blocking, he can like get a hit in. Or when we back up, 
he gets a hit in. Uh, we don't want him to be like too intelligent, but we want him to take advantage of what he has, and what he has is a glaive slash spear thing. And um, we have a shield, so he will be looking at that as well. And thus, this guy will probably strafe left more than right. But for sake of, um, well, I guess we can say direction. Like, we say that vector 3 direction. Then we can take this and just put it over here. Just for, oh, I can't put transform there. So we can define the direction here. We don't even have to say new direction anymore. We can just say strafe in this direction. That's not how you spell direction. So now they'll strafe in any direction we tell them. We can call this just strafe. Um, and I believe that'll work. Let me just double check. Uh, we have to set the speed. Um, should be like one or something. I I don't. We have to test that. We don't want him to be moving very fast. I actually don't know if this will be related to his move speed. No, it is agent speed, so it will. Yeah. So when we call strafe, we have to now say like um, transform dot uh, right minus negative of that, so we get the left. Oh, and we have to call this strafe. So now we'll see if that works. It's the it's the humanoid enemies that are um like they're the ones you want to be more complicated than anything else so we have to really make them separate from the like bugs and the flower monsters they should actually be able to look at like kind of see like their their tactics should reflect like what they see on the player yeah that's a better strafe maybe a little bit faster and um because they're tool users their tactics should also reflect the tools that they're using and what advantages they get. So really, like, we should never have this guy run up to do his claw attack. He should always run up to attack us with the spear. And then only when we get in his face should he start, like, doing this combo where he hits us and then stabs the ground and tries to freeze us. And also, we can do something... Um, we can do like a mimic strife or strafe. Uh yeah, let's try to do like a mimic strafe. So uh we can get the target. So uh by mimic strafe, I I wanna do like a um the direction. And hopefully we can get this. Let's just let's let's not worry about passing it through right now. Let's just make our own mimic strafe over here and not pass through a direction. Let's calculate it, and we'll say um, the target, which is this, and we'll say um, we'll say this movement direction up here. We're going to take this and put it up here, and instead of movement manager agent, we'll say the closest already target dot get component movement manager oh no because the player has a different um so the player is different in that 
He doesn't have it. He has a nav mesh agent, but he doesn't really use it. So we have to say, we have to see if the rigid body will have the same thing. So we'll say, um, just for now, we'll say vector tree direction. Uh, we can also just get the player movement input, and that'll be like something we can use. And what I mean by that is the player movement has a actual move input that we could just like steal in a way. We can get, we can look at what buttons the player is pushing. Um, there's there's two ways we can get the player button push, or we can have the direction of the rigid body, um, where the player is going. So we'll just see dot get rigid body. And there's not going to be a desired velocity, but we can get their velocity. And that might be... That might be enough. So I just put direction here. I don't know if that'll work. Uh, I just I, I think that would be cool to have. We'll just say mimic Rafe, and we'll get rid of this. You see what that does. It might make some weird, if we're like standing still. There we are. So that's a cool, so he'll, he'll, uh, he'll kind of mimic us, uh, except when we walk forward, he'll walk back. So we have to like, um, check for that. But this is a this is gonna be one that we're gonna be using a lot probably, because this is like how, like he's not gonna let us circle him. I don't know if we want that on the the reverse and the forward necessarily, but for the left and the right, this is definitely what we want. He's not going to let us get behind him. At least when I'm blocking, because then it, the spell goes, or the tactic changes. He kind of does that over here, but um, he's walking forward all the time. That's that's how we want the like mindless, kind of the non-strategic enemies to be. But for this guy, he should really like be kind of like, you know, scoping us out and looking for opportunities. Something like that. I have to fix his attack range. I, I already said that uh, earlier, but it's bugging me now. It was all good before, then I switched something, and now it's off. So Mimic Strafe versus Strafe. So we have two different Strafes uh, like figured out here. Uh, what time is it? It's 9.13. We have a bit of time. Um, we have a bit of time to figure this out. Uh, decaf Wave, a game involving alchemy. I'm in. Hey, Decaf, uh, decaf Wave. Welcome to the stream. Uh yeah, we um got a kind of like uh kind of like elemental alchemy. So you can have a you have a few spells. I'll show you a couple of them if you uh want to see them. So it's kind of based on like uh reality bending I the idea of alchemy, so like um uh, I've read some books about the Philosopher's Stone. It's the idea that your uh, mental can like manifest in the physical. We have uh, the element control. Full Metal Alchemist is one of my favorite anime, so I adore the science of alchemy. Hell yeah. Yeah, so pretty much like Full Metal Alchemist. 
um, but more element based. It, well, for now, eventually you can like uh, combine the elements so you can like make Kindle Sword and stuff. Yeah, so uh, welcome to the stream. We're gonna have a cool alchemy game here. We have a few spells right now, but not um, not a ton. I like this one a lot. We just summon a wood dome. Uh, wait, so can you take one object and turn it into something else? Sort of. There is a... Um, uh, let me see if I can do this while in combat. I uh, can't remember the sequence. I'm trying to teleport. There's... Oh, it's not that. If I can teleport, I can show you. I can't remember what buttons it uh, is. Okay, well, um, we can uh, do certain things like turn um, shapes of things. We will have uh, forms of transmutation in the, the future. What is it? Dark Woods 3? No, Dark Woods 1. Area 1. Zone 1. Battery Waypoint. That's cool. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's it's uh it's gonna the the higher you you get the higher your player gets in like skills like elemental control the more kind of like allows them to distort reality. So like the matter of objects and stuff. Um, in terms of like changing things, we have something like this. Whereas, oh, I have to remember the sequence again. I I recently changed this system, so I. No, it's not that. This is embarrassing. No, it's not restore. I, I had it set up differently before, so it's kind of like, oh, lightning speed. Uh, anyways, I promise you there's a way to turn this rock into a cube. I just have uh, made some mistakes and have forgotten what the settings were. I adore the alchemy circle. Thank you. Yeah, we got... um. Depending on, uh, there's like three levels, so you have three charges, so you can go like wind shot one, or wind element one, tornado shot, and it gets bigger, and then the third one is like, where you become like, um, oh, that sigil needs to be, oh, that needs to be changed, uh, I have that flat right now, it needs to match the ground, so you can kind of see it, you get like a third level one where you become super, like, powerful. It's gonna bug me. What is the command for teleporting? That's useful to know in game. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a fun little game. Well, so far, well, I hope it's fun. Let's get in there. Uh, I love how the symbol texture change appears when you uh, charge a lot. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's the the higher the charge, the greater the uh, like like energy that you're like off-putting so i wanted to or outputting rather so i wanted it to be like uh more, more visual like uh or um you know it just kind of shows the ramping up and then i want to have it so it blends between if you use like earth and um like fire i want it to be like a, a blending between like uh red and brown which i guess would be like an orangish color i'm not really sure I'm not really good at colors. I have to look up what the spells are. Because uh, I can't believe I forgot those. I haven't decided all of the spells, but uh, we have a good deal of them. Oh, okay, it's Wind Charge 2. I thought it was a combination of three of them. We have Flight, Shape is Earth Charge, Water Charge, and Fire Charge. See, I thought I put that in. Um... That mustn't be test. That mustn't be working. Earth, water, and fire. Now I'm curious. I got to test. Uh, fire, water. Oh, that's not water. Earth, fire. And uh, thank you very much for the follow. Much appreciated. Welcome to the crew. Uh, okay, so shape. So there we go. There's shape. 
So we have three different elements going. Um, I think Earth and Fire are actually sharing a prefab right now, so it doesn't. Oh no, why isn't it firing? Well, it's trying to fire. I, I recently switched the alchemy system, so everything's been changed. So I haven't tested everything. Ah, uh, that's that's too bad. Let me see if I can change this. I merely wish for it to be a cube again. Let's see. Um, Ta-da! It's now being changed into a cube. You can do stuff like that. No worries. I just think this is really cool. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to have transportation stuff um, in the game. I'm trying to think of different ideas. Uh, I want to be able to like grow things. Like you can grow plants and all that like instantly. Or shrink things down. Change the shape of things. Different stuff like that. I gotta set this back to jungle area two. Save that. And I believe we just finished the mimic strafe. So I wanna increase the speed of that. Where is the alert behavior? We did one, so let's do two. Yeah, so we've just been working on um, some AI for the last few streams. So uh, we're, we're getting near the end of the AI segment, the AI arc, as one would say. It's starting to really come together now. This is Chieftain Kumakuma. He's not a bad guy. He just, uh, he's been tasked with guarding the entrance to the temple. So, um, you have to beat him in a duel in order to get access. Okay, so this is uh, one point or two, two speeds a lot better. Uh, what if you can implement a material system, for example, assign values to a certain object and you can turn it uh, into a similar object that has close or identical values? Yeah, I was, um, when I was originally like planning out some of the alchemy system. I used to have like the idea of using um like a mass like a weight type of deal. So if something had like within like a rough estimate of like something's mass, you could turn it into something that also had that type of mass. So um if you had like a like a, a bunch of gold, just because gold's really like heavy or dense, you could turn it into like pretty much anything. Uh that was one of the ideas I was thinking about. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to, I kind of, I, I can't remember why I, I scrapped it. Um, might, it might be something to re-add. Um, so maybe, maybe, maybe we'll think about adding that. Uh, thank you for the uh, suggestion. Uh, I think that would be cool, right? Like, like being able to like turn one item to another. If we, cause we have a list of items. So if we could say like, Hey, um, an apple. It has a mass of like uh, one, and gold has a mass of five. Maybe you could turn gold into five apples, something like that. Because it's that's like the equivalent exchange uh, from Full Metal Alchemist, right? Uh, right? I'm not trying to tell you what to do. It's your game. I just thought it'd be a fun day. Oh no, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying, I, I like uh, thinking, thinking about different ideas. Okay, so now I have to figure out the distance mechanic. So we're gonna have to add a distance function. We want to have the same type of deal with this strife because it's going to always be in the negative.
direction will always be the negative of the player. So we'll say transform dot position minus the dot closest highest priority transform dot position. And that should make him move backwards uh, pretty much every time. And then we can put a condition on it. Go in here and we'll say instead of strafe, we'll say distance. Right, I have to make that. So we'll add it to the alert behavior up here. Putting this in the uh, on start. We don't really use the on start one at all. We'll keep it just in case. Uh, we do use it for this alert timer. So we'll call distance um, and We might have to make some type of check to say that, hey, um, if he's a certain distance away already, we don't really need to back up anymore more because uh, he'll just back up until like a like forever. Uh, I'm glad I popped in. This is giving me ideas for future projects down the line. Uh, awesome, awesome. Uh, I'm glad you popped in too. And I'm glad it's giving you uh, some ideas. Okay, so this is, so he'll always just like, because he's using our direction, he'll always just uh, go the opposite of us. We can kind of have him do this to get into spear range or like out of our attack range. Obviously, he would be doing it a bit uh, differently and not when we're blocking, but we can trigger it now with blocking. Uh, I'm a single girl dev just trying to make interesting little games. What I'm working on is really fun, though. I hope people like the demo when it's out. Oh, cool. Right on. Uh, have you uh, made some games before? Is this your first one? Okay, it's having some weird behavior with this. I think that's related to um, the outside uh, not being walkable. Yeah, like I think it's like getting caught here, uh, like it was before. Now we do use the sample position, so it shouldn't actually do that. But the range is still 10, so if we maybe lower this to 2, that might actually not make that happen. Uh, I've completed one game project, which was a Valentine's gift for my girlfriend a few years ago. I just got back into game dev recently, so I'm slowly getting back into the groove of things. Right on, right on. Yeah, this is my uh, first project, so I haven't released a game yet. 
Uh, is that game on Steam? Or was it just like a game that you uh, kept like off the markets? Good evening, bud. Hey, uh, Vey, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Hope you've been having a good day. Uh, we've just been working on some of the strafing mechanics and the different AI move tactics. So we're going to back him up to this wall and see if he... So he does avoid the wall like that, but it, it just looks a little weird how he slides over. So we might have to do something like with the raycasts. Um, just have it like reverse. Uh, trudging my way through some group stuff in 11, but finally done. Right on, right on. Hope that's been fun. Uh, it was it was just for her. The funny thing is, she's a speedrunner, so she broke the game after her first playthrough. Nice. Right on, right on. Uh, is he walking backwards out of the game? <laughs> it seems like it. We're just trying to get him to react to the uh well he's just trying he's reversing from the player but he's kind of we have to make him react to the the walls a bit uh he is walking backwards so you kind of like he shouldn't like he should get like very close to the wall and then realize he has to go left so what we'd want is like um uh keep strafing back until hitting wall uh, then uh, he should then uh, strafe left or right, essentially. To so just change. I uh, should just change uh, depending on uh, if there's a ray cast, I guess. So we could do the same thing essentially that we did here. Because it's essentially the same as run away, it's just that he's running away in reverse. Um, of, co of course, he is strafing. So I actually have to make a note here that this is a strafing um, form. So that's why we do this a little bit differently than the run away. Yeah, I think we'll recast it. We'll have to like uh make a function for this eventually so we can don't have to write out this code over and over again. But we we do have the strafe done, so that's one of the items. I mean, we have this this full sticky note, and we've just got one item done. Um, but you know, one's better than none, so we're making progress. That's all that matters. So we'll take this one. Yeah, yeah. Let's just make it into a function. Uh, now, nah, first we'll work on this. I'll make it into a function later. I'm a bit tired. I'd rather make it into a function later and clean it all up when I'm a little bit more. You know, like focused. So I'm just going to look over this real quick. So the direction here was because uh, we actually have a cached uh, vector three called a retreat uh, direction. 
So we'll just like take that. It's pretty much just the same thing, just uh, the um, the locomotion. So we could just like call run away, and then uh, switch the thing. I had props for working in three D too. Um, you had props. Like, what do you mean? I'm sorry, I, I don't understand what you mean. Uh, like you had like uh Oh like kudos respect. Oh okay. Okay. Um had props for like or do you mean like have props like oh to like me or say thank you, thank you. Yeah, adding that third dimension is, is is definitely a lot more a lot more math. Sometimes doing 2D stuff is really fun though. So I am a 90s baby. I'm drinking after a hard day's work, so I'm in a 90s mood right now. Oh, no problem, no problem. Yeah, I'm from the 90s as well. I'm from a ni I'm from the 94 uh year. Nineties kids best kids, as they say. Yeah, so I think I'm I'm just gonna get rid of this code here. Or get rid of this. And we just call it run away. And then we just change the, the direction. It's the same thing, right? Or because we call locomotion here, actually. We would have to overwrite that. So yeah, eventually we'll just put all this into a function. So never mind. We'll do that later. But um, we'll have a function that just says like, a, a, like a base like, like get away from the player, and then we'll have it. We'll take this big chunk of code that's like called every time, and then we'll have this be unique every time. Which is the speed and the animation. So we'll go and take these. Go and put this here. Right, and also with distance, we rotate him, so there is a bit of a, dif a difference. Um, because in Runaway, he's just always going to be rotated away from the player. With his distance, we want him to be facing the player. this works or wait hold on is that supposed to be different that should be fine so we'll play the are we debugging the lines we are
And uh, actually, I have to grab this character so we can block. And he is doing the lines, and then he should. Oh, well, that's not the behavior we want. But uh, I think it's because he's just getting too cornered. So we have to make him kind of like choose a, a different path. Um, but he's not doing... He's not being too weird. Like he, He's improved a little bit, I believe. And we wouldn't really have that kind of like when we block, he just walks off into oblivion. Uh, we would change that. Oh, and I think I've screwed up here. It's the new direction we want. Uh, so this has to be sample position in the new direction, and we need the new direction down here. So I, I screwed up there. So he wasn't adjusting like he should have. Oh, I should slow him down. Have the game sped up. But here, he kind of like recognizes that there's a wall. Just like he was before. So, we can kind of like... Not going to let us back him up into the wall if he can help it. We need to lower that range so he gets a little bit closer because it's kind of like... Um, He's detecting very far away, but if we get him here, we have to get like the perfect angle for him to go in there. But even there, I think he will collide with um, Hagu Hagu, the other goblin there, the witch doctor, and he'll uh, he'll avoid backing up into him as well. So that's uh, definitely working there. So that that's just like uh, the distance is way too far. And that's the retreat distance, so that's actually uh, going to have to be, that's a defined variable up here. Uh, so we want to keep that the same for other functions, so we'll have to just change that for distance. Um, there might be like a, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll just define, because if I put a float and I say, um, just backup distance and equal to like 3f for now. Uh, I'll clean this up later. I'll remember to fix it. So we'll do the ray cast uh, within the backup distance. And in sample position, we'll do the max distance is also the backup distance. Uh, maybe it should be a bit shorter than the backup distance, but I think that's fine. For now, we'll test it and we'll see how it looks. And it's 9.4, so I'm probably not going to be implementing anything else. I'm probably going to be wrapping this up. But I will be back at 10 for the gaming stream. I'm either going to do...
uh, more of Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth, or I'm going to do um, Fear, the, Fear the Spotlight. Probably going to do Fear the Spotlight. I think I can beat it in like three hours. Uh, wasn't too long for the dev, but still great work. Uh, wasn't around too long for the dev, but still great work. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I started a little bit late as well, so this one's only been going for three hours, so. And we didn't do much, so don't, didn't miss much. Now he gets a little bit closer to the wall, and then he starts to strafe out. And because we have that um, that movement input computed, like he'll actually do his strafe animations. It's, it's maybe not perfect, but it's it's pretty damn good for like what we want. Like you can see, like sometimes it looks like he's stumbling because he's switching between the two real fast. But he's actually like backing up against the wall, and he's uh. We we can kind of trap him there, and he'll he'll try to at least get away or attack us. And when he's low health, he runs away and he tries to heal. And that rotation there doesn't look so good, um, but that's because he's running away from the wall. So that could maybe be a bit smoother looking. Uh, but it looks decent. So we got distance and we got strafe done. Well, mostly done. These will need some fine tuning. So I think, um, heck yeah, hell yeah, yeah. We got it. We got it. Took a long time, but we got it. Uh, we just need to do block next time, which will be like a different can of worms because it's not a skill. It's not an attack skill. But it's not a movement tactic. So it's just like a state that he has to be put into. A state where he can't take damage from 60 degrees in front of him when he's blocking, but he can be attacked from behind or the sides. So we'll have to figure that out. Um, but that's going to be it for now. Uh, thank you all for hanging out. Uh, thanks for chatting in the chat, everyone. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time or at the gaming stream. So uh, cheers for now. I'll be back in like uh, 10 minutes probably. Take care.